Drum crushers are machines that flatten bulky steel drums, the world's most popular shipping container. At a certain point, they can no longer be reused and need to be recycled. Drum crushers compress them into discs so that they can be economically transported to recycling facilities. This drum crusher wields 26 times more force than the average household trash compactor and can flatten steel drums in seconds. To make the drum crusher, a computerized plasma cutter carves out many of the parts from thick steel. The machine both cuts out the profile and makes holes for components. This particular part is a locator plate for the drums. At another station, a worker traces around a template, transferring the outline to partially machined parts below. These parts are the crusher's top and bottom panels. He grinds off flaky areas of the surface to prep the steel for welding. This process is time consuming, so he works only within the outline. Next, workers saw steel tubes to specific lengths. The tubes will serve as forklift pockets for loading the crusher onto a truck or simply moving it around in a recycling plant. Another worker now sets up a fixturing system to hold the crusher housing panels in position for welding. He clamps the parts to the fixturing table. This first part is the bottom of the crusher chamber. He assembles the side supports and the top of the unit within the fixturing device. He clamps the supports at the corners, and with the structure now held together with clamps, he tack welds it and follows up with permanent welds. Next up is the back of the crusher chamber. It's been rounded to accommodate the cylindrical steel containers. Again, the worker tack welds it to the crusher structure. He then does full thick welds both from the inside and the outside. And after that, he'll add the locator plate to the base. He then welds structural supports to the crusher door. Turning the door to the other side, he installs horizontal reinforcements. This braces the door to withstand the substantial crushing force. After hinging the door to the chamber, the worker inserts the large latch into a support bracket and tack welds it. A powder coat paint job completes the housing. Workers now assemble the crusher's hydraulic power unit. After bolting a pump motor to the lid, the team flips it over. They insert a hydraulic pump into its housing on the lid's underside. They plumb the pump and attach a suction strainer to filter contaminants from the hydraulic oil. They flip the lid back to the top side. One of the workers screws a pressure relief valve to a fitting that connects to the pump on the other side of the lid. This valve will regulate the flow of hydraulic oil to ensure there's adequate pressure for the crusher's operation. If there's too much pressure, the valve will shut the crusher down. To attach the hydraulic power unit, a crane does the heavy lifting as a worker guides it into place at the back of the crusher chamber. Moving to the top, a member of the team installs the crusher cylinder. He bolts the retaining plate to the chamber. The substantial and hefty crusher head is next. Using a forklift, workers maneuver it into position on the shaft and then secure it with a thick steel pin. The head isn't complete without this pierce point. Fixed to the end of the crusher head, it will puncture the drum to drain residual fluids and release air for better compaction. Now complete, it's time to put this crusher to the test and it easily flattens the steel drum. This flattened drum will be recycled into new steel that can be used to make many things, including more drum crushers.